Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host, behind the camera. Uh, today I'm going to take you on a quick tour of my new composites oven. Uh, as you can see, it's a plywood box. I built this out of essentially one sheet of plywood, a little bit of extra for the ends, it's quarter inch thick plywood, and a pile of one by twos, and some fiberglass insulation, light bulbs, wires, a couple other off-the-shelf items. Uh, I'll be using this oven to cure long uh, carbon fiber composite components for the aircraft, such as tubing and L brackets, so forth and so on. Uh, let me bring you in for a little closer look here at uh, the little bit of instrumentation that's on this item. Uh, here you see the temperature controller. What are we at right now? We're up to 191 degrees right now. Um, and this controller turns the light bulbs on and off. Uh, those light bulbs provide the heat for the oven. Uh, this is programmable. You can set it to just about any temperature range. I have this one set to 180 to 200 degrees um, and the controller will keep it in that range. Uh, excuse me, I think I have it set 180 to 190 degrees. Uh, what happens is that uh, depending on your particular oven, you need to do a little calibration on this device uh, on the controller because when it turns the light bulbs off, the temperature actually coasts higher for a while. As we can see, it's at 191.4 right now and uh, coming back down so the light bulbs are off and when it gets back down to 180 it will turn the light bulbs back on but the temperature will continue to drop it'll drop back down to about 175 so I need to go back in and reprogram and allocate for the overshoot at the upper end and the overshoot at the lower end so that I can hold an accurate temperature range of 180 to 190 um, this little controller is available on Amazon. I think I paid, oh, 32 bucks for it. So it's a pretty good deal. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have power coming in up here, and then there's a, uh, I create a little extension cord to come out here where I can plug in the light bulbs and a little electric fan that I have inside circulating the air. Uh, just as a quick note, you'll see uh, I put uh, a couple of handles on the side here. That makes it a lot easier to just grab this thing and pick it up and carry it around. Uh, much, much easier that way. Box isn't too heavy, uh, but it is bulky and the handles come in, well, handy. Uh, the wire that you see running down the side here uh, goes up inside the box. That is the thermocouple that picks up the temperature for the readout. Now, uh, these ovens are generally made to cure uh, wet hand layup composites. Uh, the big advantage is, is that as you run up the temperature uh, of the uh, component that you're curing, uh, the uh, epoxy itself becomes a little less viscous, more runny, and it has a, a, a stronger ability. It's uh, easier for that excess epoxy to go through the bleeder layer and into the bleeder cloth, and hence you remove the excess resin from your part. Uh, as opposed to just uh, room temperature curing, uh, this process will actually make your parts uh, a little bit lighter, a little bit stronger. Uh, so it's well worth the investment. I think I built this whole thing for, oh, $160, something like that. So now let's uh, turn it off and let's take a look inside. Okay, so let's take a look inside. Whoa, there we go. As you can see, it's a box with insulation, nothing too particularly complicated. Uh, what you can see here is I have a very heavy duty oven type aluminum foil covering the light bulbs. This is to prevent uh, heat spots on the component that you're carrying. Uh, if the light bulbs are exposed, the, the radiant heat uh, will vary drastically going down the oven. You get hot spots on your uh, uh, component that you're making and that can be bad for the cure. Uh, so uh, underneath the aluminum foil, you can see the light bulbs themselves. I have eight 100-watt uh, light bulbs in here. And even though I shouldn't have to say it, I will say it, these are incandescent light bulbs, uh, the old-fashioned variety. Uh, obviously, LEDs aren't going to do us much good. Uh, they run very cool. So, um, just in case you had to ask, here's a little muffin fan here, a little box fan. Ooh, that baby's hot. 
it was warm in there. Uh, this fan helps push air around inside the box and helps ensure that there's even even heating uh, along the component uh, that you're carrying. Uh, the fan was maybe 20 bucks off of Amazon, uh, 110 volt, just plug it right in. When the light bulbs turn off, I have the fan turn off so that uh, we don't cool uh, the oven excessively. Uh, the whole time between light on and light off is about two, two and a half minutes, so that's not a bad cycle time. Uh, the bases of the light bulbs, I uh, glued in initially with a CA adhesive to just tack glue them in place, and then I put silicone uh, adhesive around the base. The silicone resists temperatures up to about 600 degrees, so it's fine. Uh, this handy dandy little setup uh, will get up to well over 200 degrees, which is way more than we need to cure our parts. So if you're building anything uh, composite, an uh, oven like this can come in handy. Long skinny one like this for making tubing and L-bracket material. Or if you're making different shapes, well, just build your oven in a different shape. And uh, I don't have it on here, but you might want to consider uh, putting uh, some weather sealant rubber a temperature resistant weather sealant along the top get a better seal on the lid it'll hold the temperature better so uh build one for yourself and make better composite parts thanks for stopping and visiting again today and spread the word bye now